Hi ho folks and welcome back to the adventures of Turwinkle, the Gnome Mage. Well hi Turwinkle. Greetings. Are you all set for tonight sir? Sure. Well great because tonight we are going to go and talk with Morwelp, the guild leader of the clergy of the Holy Light and we're going to find out all about his role play, a little bit about him and maybe get some advice for you new role players out there. And so without further ado, let us go and find Morwelp. Alrighty, folks. Well, let us see here. He may be in... He wasn't at the main church here, so we'll check out the abbey here. This is a lovely ad abbey here in Tyr's hand. And as you can see, Turnwinkle has already cleansed this place earlier. If you've followed any of the adventures of Turnwinkle, you will have seen that episode where he came in and cleared up the bad guys out of this wonderful... And, oh! And here he is, ladies and gentlemen. It is Morwelp, the chief shepherd of the clergy of the Holy Light. He's Morwelp the Pilgrim. He's a level 100 dwarf priest. Hello, sir. Hey, how are you? I am well, and I see you've brought someone with you as well? Yes, this is generally. She's a member of the Noble Guard, uh, the Archbishop's personal guard. Oh, excellent. Well, it's nice to have her here as well. And it is great to be able to sit down with you. I've always been a big fan of not only your role play, but of your guild's role play as well. And so I can't wait to find out all about that. And that's what we're going to do here tonight, folks. So coming up next, we are going to dive right in to this wonderful role player and his role play all about Morwelp. We'll be right back as we begin that. All right, folks, and we are back. And so we have more whelp here. And so, sir, how long have you been playing World of Warcraft? Um, I believe I've been playing, uh, let's see here. Uh, I started a bit before the Burning Crusade expansion, but I really, I had my own account during the Burning Crusade expansion. So however long that was. <laughs> okay. And was your first character more whelp, or did you have another character that you started with? My very first character was actually a human paladin. Um, I don't have him anymore. He was on uh, actually my friend's mom's account, <laughs> funny enough. But yeah, yeah, uh, Morwolf was a, a close second. He was my first character on my own account. Okay, and did you have the concept of Morwolf in your mind when you made the character, or did that come about after uh, you made the character? Actually, Morwolf started off as a, um, as a Draenei. <laughs> Obviously, he's not a Draenei anymore, but... I uh, started floating around the idea of Morwulf the character around the time of uh, the Wrath of Lich King expansion, actually the uh, pre-expansion event where the you know the Scourge invaded Stormwind. I started uh, playing with Morwulf as a as a character around that time. Oh, okay. And so, what made you decide to go with the dwarf? Oh, uh, probably the most honest reason. Uh, to be completely honest, despite my t appealing to Blizzard several times, hobbits aren't playable in this game, which is a real shame. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that dwarves would be a pretty close second to the character that I had in mind. But really, the thing that keeps me playing a dwarf is the stereotypical dwarf character. You know what I'm talking about. The belligerent alcoholic that hates elves and digs holes all day. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that inherently, and, uh, you know, some great roleplay can be had from that. I wanted to show, the, at least to myself, that dwarves could be more than a, you know, a comical race with this, uh, with this gimmick of alcoholism and, uh, you know, just general hatred for everything. <laughs> So I wanted to experiment with a dwarf that takes himself very seriously and is in general pretty sober. <laughs> dwarves in WoW, from my estimation, are, you know, probably, they're very fierce, proud people. And uh, they're probably the most uh, politically uh, motivated and seriously written race in the entire game. That's, again, by my estimation and my opinion. Think about, you know, Alteric Valley storyline for that. Also, I thought that uh, it was an interesting time in the history of Warcraft to play a dwarf character with some faith, since uh, the dwarven religious world is in uh, turmoil. Uh, with the Dark Iron, for the most part, leaving their Ragnaros cult, and uh, with a, at least a small minority of dwarves uh, turning their attention away from uh, their religion of the light uh, to the Titans. There's certainly a lot of potential there for a good story if you're playing a dwarf. Oh, well, awesome. And I guess the last question for this segment is, how did you come up with the name Morwell? Hmm. Well, there's actually a really funny story behind that. Originally, this character, again, as a dwarf on the server, his name was Wolpertinger. The same as the pet. No alt codes, no no anything. It was just Wolpertinger. And I thought that was very clever, and I liked that name. So, uh, anyway, I, I 
tried to I tried to apply to this very serious roleplay guild it's called the Holy See. It was actually my inspiration for making the clergy. In this interview, I was just completely mortified from the beginning. Let me let me just go ahead and say that I was you know very close to a uh, <laughs> to hyperventilating. I mean it it was a very serious thing for me. <laughs> I took their roleplay very seriously, and I thought that they were almost unapproachable in a sense. So anyway, yeah, I had this interview, and the guy's name was Warpertinger. Uh, he was interviewed by a guy that uh, asked him what his name was. And he said, my name is Brother Wolpertinger. And he said, well, what's your last name, Brother Wolpertinger? And again, I was just absolutely mortified. <laughs> so I uh, just came up with something off the top of my head, to be completely honest. And I thought of where my character was and something from that area. And I knew that I wanted my character to be from around the lock and the wetlands. And uh, so I thought more, being a swamp, and then whelp, being like a dragon whelp, because, you know, there's a bunch of... Uh, red dragon lore around there. So I, I literally came up with that in about five seconds. But it's really stuck, and ended up changing my character name to it, actually. Well, that is a fantastic story. I love that whole concept. And sometimes, yeah, some of the best names come from those real quick decisions, and one that'll carry you through the rest of your roleplay career. So that is awesome. And so, folks, when we come back, we're going to find out a little bit about the history behind More Wealth and find out what that backstory is. So we'll be right back with that. All righty, folks, and we are back. And so, More Wealth, how long have you been role-playing in WoW? In WoW, I probably started role-playing, I guess you could say, the second, or not the second, but a very, very short amount of time after I made my first character. And it wasn't, it was, wasn't even a role-playing server, it was a normal server. I actually remember it very vividly. <laughs> I, I knew nothing about the game. I didn't know that there were blacksmithing training uh, trainers in Goldshire or anywhere else. Uh, again, I had a human paladin, and uh, I approached a person. I believe it was a night elf of some sort. It was uh, around in Goldshire, uh, Northshire or something. I said something to the effect of, uh, My lord, uh, uh, how do I travel to the lands of the dwarves? I must learn from the very best when it comes to mining and blacksmithing. And uh, the guy, of course, being on a normal server, said something to the effect of, Dude, LOL, just make a dwarf character. You don't have to run all that way. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now, how long have you been, ro have you been role playing uh, before WoW? Yeah, I probably been role playing in some form or another since I was very young whether it be with you know sticks and rocks in the woods with neighbor kids or with tabletop games I've you know I've been doing a lot of that I did a lot of you know during my teenage years I did a lot of uh, forum role play and I, I definitely got a lot of my writing skill from there okay what would you consider your type of role play to be are you a multi-paragrapher do you do reactionary role play what kind of style is it I'm, I'm pretty adaptable um, I don't usually, you know, spit out four paragraphs to somebody that's spitting out, you know, just, I, I don't want to intimidate them in that way. In the same way, I don't want to only dignify a, a huge, a huge response with a, a one line. I, I try to be adaptable in that way. Uh, but in the, you know, overall story arc, I'm, I'm pretty, I guess you could say reactionary. I guess that'd be the word. Uh, really, Morop has become more of a storyteller than a, a character that involves himself directly in plots. He interacts with at least a dozen people a day, and that's on a slow day. And most of whom are new and uh, need something from him in the church community or want a blessing or something. So uh, he's kind of, I'm not sure a good metaphor for this, but he's basically like a, well, first thing that comes to mind is like an air traffic controller uh, for role play. Uh, you know, people come in the cathedral all the time looking for something, and he helps them find it in one way or another. Uh, he'll send them on a quest. He'll do whatever he needs to do to, uh, you know, to keep their storyline going. Oh, awesome. So would you consider your role play to be a heavy role play then? Yes, I'm almost always in character. Um, and uh, yeah, I would, I would consider myself a heavy role player. Oh, well, that's fantastic. All right, folks, I know we promised it. And so it, the next segment, we're going to get to it, uh, more Whelp storyline. So we'll be right back with that. All righty, folks, and we are back. And so, Morwelp, what is the story behind Morwelp? What is his role-play storyline? I guess it began, or at least from what we know, it began when he was suddenly, he suddenly found himself in charge of his clan. And uh, his clan was pretty disgraced as far as nobles go, but they happened to be very wealthy because they were, they were merchants. And uh, his father, of course, died, and uh, he became the patriarch of his clan. But he was, he was never really comfortable with that. He was never really 
very good at money. He was very bad with money, in fact. He basically put his clan into remarkable debt. He, prefer, he preferred a uh, very a very simple life, uh, much to the disdain of his older brothers, who probably could have done everything he did better. <laughs> uh, and he knew that, but, you know, because of the succession laws, he, he was the patriarch. He, he joined, he ended up joining uh, the army, and he, he served in that way, but he didn't really see a whole lot in it. But he met a woman, of course. He married that woman, and uh, they brought, it, through her, I guess, more worldly skills with managing money, they actually brought their clan back to some success. What well, ended up uh, the, with the War of the Three Hammers, uh, she actually died. She was killed in battle, and uh, along with, of course, a lot of other people. But, uh, you know, they were in the same regiment, so he actually was the one that ended up bearing her. It was a very, very emotional experience for him. He was pretty distraught about this, but he served the War of the Three Hammers. He served all of that through. For it, his uh, service was offered a seat on the Senate, which was really big for him politically. But he was just mentally feeble at this point and completely uninspired by the idea of being a senator. He completely set, a, set apart his entire life. He sold everything. He gave away everything. He basically went out and wandered around the woods for a very long time. I keep it purposely ambiguous how long that was. Is it probably just for how old he was, it, it was at least 100 years, which is a very long time to run around the woods. So he, he becomes very unhealthy at this point, but it, he, this is, these were the most happiest times of his miserable life up until that point. So anyway, uh, he, again, wanders in the woods for a very long time. He finds what would have been the uh, late Arathorian Empire when it was about to fall. He found a culture that was very deeply rooted in the light, which was pretty foreign to him being a dwarf. He was taken up by this new philosophy, or at least new to him. He was he regarded it as the absolute fulfillment of everything he had, you know, found out about his, uh, the universe and his lonely contemplation. He really wanted to become a priest, but due to the fact that there weren't very many dwarves that were, you know, of the light religion, it wasn't very easy for him. It was kind of it, it wasn't necessarily racism on the humans' part, but the, they were not exposed to dwarves, and you know, dwarves were, weren't really exposed to the light. So there was that kind of hurdle he had to jump over. So he spent a very long time trying to become a priest. <laughs> so anyway, yes, uh, it, you know, time went on. Of course, you know, the Arathorian Empire falls, and he uh, grants his service to several uh, kings and nobles uh, as a not necessarily a priest, but uh, I suppose you could say like a, a steward of sorts. Because, you know, he still had that, and he could uh, offer that, and in return, he hoped that somebody would finally sponsor him to become a priest. And eventually somebody did. It was around the time of, right before the First War, he served as a priest in all of the wars to some degree, to some very small degree. And uh, he was part of the Order the order of Preachers, which is, a, I guess you could say, a holy order uh, made by a few friends and I that wanted to link our characters. Basically, uh, time goes on. He he serves in the army to some degree in the in the in the alliance of Lord Ron and then the Grand Alliance. Eventually, I actually start playing more well, and he walks in the Stormwind for the first time, and he's just a lowly priest. He's trying to find his find his place in the world. So that's kind of where Morlop, how Morlop's story began, and of course, it's gone on now for five years with me playing him. That is a wonderful story. And how long did it take you to come up with that back backstory? I am still coming up with it today. Uh, of course, I had to have some basic, some basic structure to a more wealth when I first started role playing, and, and that's uh, you can kind of see very, very basic structure in there where he left the dwarves, he went to the humans, he became more humanized, and then he started, you know, being played by me. So uh, yeah, I guess you could say that I came up with the, the structure for it around five years ago, and I'm still working on it today. Well, that's great, and. Very well detailed and very well done, sir. And so, folks, when we come back, we are going to find out a little bit about Morwelp himself in real life. So we'll be right back with that. All right, folks, and we are back. And so we are going to find out a little bit about Morwelp in real life. And the reason we do this again is to break those stereotypes of what a role player is. And so... We know that all role players come from different backgrounds, different professions, different genders. And so, more well, I guess, what are what do you do in real life? What's, what's some of the stuff you do in real life? By occupation, I'm a TA for a geoscience class. And that basically means that I, I help teach sometimes, I grade papers. And because it's a geoscience class, half the time I'm, I'm counting rocks. I wish I was kidding, but no, I'm counting rocks. That's what I do for a living. <laughs> 
you know, I really enjoy that, uh, learning about the geosciences, because it's, it's uh, uh, I'm very interested in science and nature in general. Again, I'm currently in school myself. I'm uh, also an administrator for the uh, MoonGuard Wikia, and that uh, that's something that uh, I spend a lot of time on. Uh, it's uh, the MoonGuard Wikia is basically a place where everybody in MoonGuard can compile their character and guild info. It's something that is edited by anybody on MoonGuard. I'm really proud to be a part of that. I'm involved with uh, several charities. I'm a uh, I'm really big into volunteerism, especially locally. So yeah, it's a little bit about me. All right, sir. Now, do you do any writing outside of the game? Yeah, yeah, I dabble a bit. Probably not as much as I should. I find that uh, writing in the past, it, it really helps me with my roleplay. But, um, yeah, again, probably not as much as I should. And any books that you enjoy, sir? Oh, man, let's see. Uh, I'm uh, recently, I know I'm behind the game on this one, but I've been recently reading Game of Thrones. Uh, of course, I'm a student, so I don't have a whole lot of time to read for leisure. But certainly in high school, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed uh, reading the Lord of the Rings series. I know I've read that entire series again probably three or four times. And every time I catch something out, every time I uh, enjoy it a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a pretty big reader. Well, excellent. Uh, what is the end goal with the school? What are you going to end up doing? That's a good question. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, I'll end up with a... a uh, a dual degree in uh, economics and geology, and I hope to probably work somewhere in a in a corporation helping uh, helping with exploration geology. That's really where my passion is. Oh well, excellent, man. That's quite a quite a hefty degree, sir, to have. It is, and it takes a lot. It takes a lot of work. I'm finding out how much work it's taking. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent. Now, sir, again. What are some of the other hobbies that you have outside of the game? I teach at a, uh, for a, a gym and mineral show. And generally that's uh, a bunch of Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts that come in. And they're, they're working on their merit badges. Teach them everything they did not want to know about rocks. And I just en I enjoy doing that so much. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, really, it's really a pleasure to work with those kids. It's actually, uh, I don't know, it's certainly, certainly interesting to see how much, how much those kids can know, really. Well, that's great, and I, you know, I certainly love to hear all that that involves in that community, that, that the things that you do, and so that is wonderful, sir, and excellent. So there you go, folks. Again, another example of someone that's going for such a, a smart degree and, and doing wonderful things in his community, but also likes to role play. So excellent. So when we come back, we are actually going to get some advice for you new role players out there from this veteran role player, Morwell. So we'll be right back with that. All righty, folks, and we are back. And so, more well, what advice do you have for those new and those old role players out there? Well, for uh, new role players specifically, I would say uh, don't let your affiliations to your guilds or you know, even your friends limit who you interact with. I am uh, I'm daily astounded by the amount of people who will admit to and or even they're even proud of never having interacted with anybody outside their guild. And that is just so bizarre to me because I have found a great hoard of uh, knowledge and creativity from people who aren't in my guild or aren't even in my group of friends. Um, I think that limiting who we interact with, especially based off one's first guild or a guild period, interferes with our roleplay and uh, how well we can play our characters. Oh, excellent. That's Yeah, exactly. You always want to keep those horizons open and keep those ears open for and eyes for new role players out there and you know experiencing all those different story arcs because the thing with role players is they're such a creative bunch and there are just such wonderful stories out there uh, like more whelp that are so imaginative and so creative that really to sit down and just focus on one thing would be a shame to be able to experience all that there is with the role play going on around you is really wonderful and I think that's what makes World of Warcraft such a great game is because it has such a great role play community within it and so uh, that is excellent excellent advice sir and thanks uh, and another thing I think that's really important is that we should always be willing to make some sacrifices for our story um, what I mean by that is uh, like when roleplay gets stale, not necessarily even on a server, in a guild, in a group of friends, whatever. 
there's a always a few factors to blame, surely. Like, you know, it could be the time of the year, there could be testing going on, it could be vacations, whatever. One thing we could control uh, about when roleplay goes stale is uh, sometimes there's this general unwillingness to sacrifice parts of our characters for a story. Uh, for instance, uh, Turwinkle getting captured by the Forsaken. That's a really good example of how veteran role players can use their characters as instruments to create role play. Another piece of advice I think is uh, don't ever be afraid to, uh, like even as a veteran role player, to play an apprentice or a squire or uh, you know some lowly priest. Moral started as a lowly priest. Uh, don't ever be afraid to start as a private in a military or something like that. Uh, uh, something low on the social totem pole. And don't be afraid to have your character be wrong sometimes. I think that you'll find that you'll learn more about role playing, and you'll create a more, a more excellent character, and um, you'll have a lot more fun doing it. Now, the question that I always get, especially about Moonguard, is of course of a certain area within Moonguard. Now, for those folks that are wanting to roll a character on Moonguard, how would you? have them avoid certain situations or environments that they might not find uh, enjoyable? Well, uh, <laughs> funny story. I used to play uh, first, at, at very first when I came on the server, I didn't play more well, but I played an uh, old fat watchman that ate donuts all the time, but she happened to be a female. And I still was confronted with this, uh, this what you say, the more uh, sultry parts of Moonguard. Um, Kind of more facetious advice I'd give is play an old character that's not a female. <laughs> but really, I think that uh, you'll find that once you can get out of gold, like once you can get out of a starting level, you'll find that, that the scope at which that affects is very limited. I forget all about Goldshire even existing half the time. That is not a huge part of my role play. It's not a part of my role play at all. Um, I think that uh, once you find that the uh, the, the the life that the server actually has to it, apart from Goldshire, <laughs> not the nightlife. <laughs> um, I think you'll find that uh, it's not important. It's not at all important to uh, how you play on Moonguard. And I think that's exactly true. And it's unfortunate that there's always so much uh, attention given to that small little speck of an area in a fantastic role play server that really you know, has nothing to do with the community within Moonguard. And Moonguard really has a strong and a vibrant roleplay community within it. And again, it's a shame that, you know, the talk about Moonguard always seems to kind of focus on that one little tiny speck. So, folks, when you're looking to roll on Moonguard, don't worry about that little tiny speck of insignificant nothing, but really embrace the wonderful roleplay community that is on Moonguard with characters like Morwell Pier, and I think you'll have a lot of fun on that server. So excellent, 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 sir. Wonderful advice. And so when we come back, folks, we're going to get a shout out from Morwell to all those folks that he would like to give a big shout out to. So we'll be right back with that. All right, folks, and we are back. And so Morwell, who would you like to give a shout out to tonight? Okay, well, first, I'd like to give out a shout. I give a shout out to the entirety of the Moonguard server, um, especially users of the wiki and the forums. Um, you guys are great. Uh, you've kept me here for so long, and uh, I don't intend to leave anytime soon. <laughs> um, uh, secondly, the clergy of the Holy Light, my guild. Uh, these are the friends that keep me here. They support me uh, through all the trials of life, really, and uh, they're all wonderful people. Uh, the Council of Bishops and uh, all the great things that we're able to accomplish by uh, cooperation. Uh, we've built something really nice, and uh, I really appreciate all of you for the part you've played in that. And uh, last, but absolutely not least, uh, all the people from the uh, LFRP podcast, Tart, Dravi, Kravog, and of course you, Terwinkle. I'm a big fan. Uh, keep up the good work. Um, this is a real pleasure. Oh, well, thank you very much, sir, and from Tark and Dravi as well. I'm sure they give you a big thank you for that also. And so, folks, it has been a lot of fun here tonight, and Morwelp and generally has been so patient and kind in answering all of Turwinkle's 
pestering questions. I really appreciate it, sir, and I want to thank you very much for all the wonderful role play that you do. I've been always a big fan, as I mentioned earlier in the pod, in the podcast, earlier in the episode here, to, that you really have been a, a, a big inspiration for my role play and have played, whether you know it or not, have played a, a pivotal role in several of my role plays with other characters that I've played with. And the, the uh, Clergy of the Holy Light as well. All of you guys have done such a fantastic job on Mood Guard, making it such a fun, fun place to role play. So I thank you guys as well. It's really our pleasure. I'm, I'm glad to hear some feedback that, that uh, certain character stories have been positively affected by the clergy as opposed to negatively affected. <laughs> All righty, folks. So with that, Turwinkle's going to hearth on back, and it's not very far hearth. In effect, he may ride Glenn over to Light Hope's Chapel, and we are going to give our final thoughts on this wonderful role player and his role play, more whelp. All righty, folks. Well, we made it safe and sound back to Light Hope's Chapel, and boy, Turwinkle, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Indubitably. So let us give more whelp a nice big thank you, sir. I am in your debt. We certainly are. And so, folks... Once again, if you're in Moonguard and you happen to be in the Cathedral District, keep an eye out. You might catch more whelp and maybe even catch one of his liturgies in the Clergy of the Holy Light and catch some of his role play. He does a wonderful, wonderful job. And so with that, folks, if you like this episode, click that like button. If you'd like to comment on this episode or on any of our previous episodes, please do so below. Let us know what you liked and what you didn't. And finally, if you'd like to subscribe, well, we would love to have you. So just hit that subscription button today. Well, Turnwinkle, an excellent, excellent job as always, sir. And Turnwinkle, we will see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye, Turnwinkle. Bye-bye.